today's talk uh, will offer to dear brothers and sisters one part about life. But today's topic is very important because this uh, topic is about what we do in our lives, how we live our lives. And that is to do with this quality we have in our mind that is called thirst. T-H-I-R-S-T, thirst. Yeah. And when we know that when we are thirsty, we don't have enough water to drink, life is very difficult. Ah, oh, I'm so thirsty. Let me go and find some water. Where can I get a drink? So that this thirst can be controlled. Yeah, and as you know, you know, sometimes when we have a very, very hot weather, when the weather in Malaysia, in Asia is very hot, uh, the thirst comes very, very fast and very easily. You know, after one hour, you say, oh, I'm thirsty again. I really need a drink. So, you know, we go and look for places that can supply this water, liquid, drinks, and then after that, we feel that oh, we are not so, uh, we don't feel so difficult. Yeah. But it comes back. It comes back again because we have our bodies yeah, are 80% water. Yeah, our cells, all that are made up of 80% yeah, water. So therefore, we need to keep filling and replacing the water that we have lost. Yeah, of course, when we go to the toilet, yeah, we lose water. When we sweat, we also lose uh, water. And so this must be constantly replaced. And to know that we don't have enough water, we have this feeling, yeah, this, uh, this understanding in us that we are thirsty. Yeah, so imagine, remember, thirsty. Yeah, it is uh, something which is quite disturbing to us. So we always try to find a way to quench the thirst. Yeah? So this word is um, uh, put forward yeah, uh, to describe the nature of this thirst. How do we quench it? The English word is quench, yeah? satisfy, take away the thirst, satisfy ourselves. Yeah? And it can be a very, very strong feeling. Yeah, indeed, if we don't get, uh, if we become very thirsty, how do we quench it? Yeah, so that we can go about our life yeah, in a very comfortable and easy way. So included in the understanding of thirst, and we, we will go through the different aspects of it. Some aspects will be a little bit deep so it requires us to go back and think so after today's um, dhamma lunch you have to tapao yeah and for the rest of the week please think about it yeah what is it that i really can take away yeah what is it that can, i can learn educate myself yeah about this topic of, of thirst so there is this these two words First, there is thirst, then there is wanting, and there is not wanting. Yeah, this was uh, written as the title of the talk. Yeah, so I've taken the title and I've tried to um, uh, understand it and present it to brothers and sisters in a way that I hope you will find interesting and you will keep thinking about it yeah, when the talk is over. So the Buddha used the word thirst as well. He used many words, in fact. Yeah? It is not just one word that he talked about. Oh, not moving. Okay, never mind. Uh, let us forward. So there is this word thirst, plus a whole list of others like desire, wanting, craving, greed, etc. So in Pali, we use this word tanha. Yeah, uh, just let me go backward one. 
yeah, uh, yeah, forward, right? Again, uh, we have desire, wanting, craving, greed, and yearning. The Pali word tanha. And why do we talk about it? It's because this thirst lets us experience suffering. There's a great link between the thirst, this tanha. Please remember this Pali word. Yeah, it will be very useful for the rest of the talk. Tanha. Yeah, this thirst, wanting something, not enough, the desire. Yeah. Uh, the yearning, there's another English word, the greed, this thirst, yeah, all comes under the Pali word tanha. And this tanha, when we have the tanha, we experience suffering or dukkha. So there is a link. That's why when we live life, we have to understand what is it that motivates us? That is, what is it that makes us do all these things in our life? Which is also interesting why you are here on a Sunday morning. Yeah? Sunday morning, you have nothing to do. Ah. <laughs> you have many things to do on Sunday morning. Yeah? One of which is you clean your house. Right, you take your kids, you know, to the market. You go and have dim sum. Yeah, you have many things to do. But why do you have this need to come here, to sit on the floor? But we have aircon. <laughs> when I started learning dhamma, no aircon. Yeah, only fan. So. Then you begin to understand there is need, one thing, for something out there and something in here. Do you realize that? You are not part of the thousands out there looking for breakfast, <laughs> interesting breakfast on the Sunday morning. This morning you just had some bread something quick, and then you come to Nalanda. But those people out there, they are looking for so many things to do on the Sunday morning. They also want something. And we also want something. What is it? Now we need to understand this. Because when we understand this, it becomes clear. Not just fuzzy fuzzy, not sure, not sure. We, we don't want that. We want things to be clear. And when they are clear, we see it, we know really, really, we know what to do. But if it is not clear, okay, la, sometimes I do. La. Sometimes I also don't do. La. If I can, I do. If I cannot, I don't do. That is not clear. Because when you are clear, you know you want to do it. You have to do it. Yeah. You do it because it is the right thing to do. But if you're not clear, maybe it's right, maybe it's not right. Convenient, I do. Not convenient, I don't do. Raining, I don't come. You know, hot also, I don't come. You know, traffic also, I don't come. Everything right, huh? ngam ngam. Then only I come. <laughs> is that clear? You are not clear. There is no clear vision of your motivation. Why do you want it? But one thing is clear. We are all having tanha. All of us. If there is no tanha, we are not here. We are not existing. We are not born. Yeah. So, another way of putting it is tanha is the fever. One, sorry, so many words. Wanting thirst, wanting fever. You know, because when I uh, did my research, I found many uh, writers and many teachers, they use many different kinds of words. Some I, I thought is not necessary. 
But this word fever also is good because why we um, use the word fever to explain tanha? Because it means we are not well. <laughs> when we have fever, it means, oh, I'm not well. You go and tell your mother, mom, I'm not well. I don't want to go to school. <laughs> but we know that we are not well because fever. So another way of looking at it is, it is the fever that we want something. Yeah. It is an unsatisfied wanting. That means we are not contented. Yeah, we are not happy. There is something out there to drive us to do something. Yeah, I'm still not contented. I still want something. Therefore, I must use my energy, my body, physical, my mind, mental, together, I must go and achieve something. So this is driving us. Do you know what it is? You have it. This tanha, we have it. You know, that's why we decide afterwards, what am I going to eat? Huh? <laughs> it is a tanha. Yeah. We can supply the lunch for you, but maybe you think, this lunch is not good enough. Yeah. I'm going to eat something I really like. Uh, that is tanha coming out. So we need to understand this clearly. What did the late chief say about it? <laughs> this is my teacher and many of you have met a uh, late chief. Does it work or not? It's not working. No? No, never mind. I, I will use the, the, the key. Late chief said, there is no crave, if there is no craving, we will not exist anywhere in this universe. There will be no living beings if there is no craving. Because we want something. Hmm, I want. We come here. This is what makes us exist. This is what causes us to be born. Is this, I want. I want. I cannot let go. I have it. I want it. This brings us to existence. We exist because of our craving. The main cause of our existence, our birth, is nothing, nothing but craving. It's only it. Yeah, nothing but craving. Do you want to know what it feels like to crave to be born? Okay, let's do a quick exercise. Yeah. Number one, close your eyes. Number two, take your finger, uh, you will have to arrange it. Use your thumb, close your ear. Two ears. And get ready for the third one. Number three, close your nose with your fingers. You can or not? Uh, okay, uh, no, don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. All right. Let's do it at the same time and then you will understand. Okay, now close your eyes. Yeah, somehow close your eyes. Close your ears. Now close your nose and close your mouth. Close eyes, close ears. Now what do you feel? Yeah, cannot, isn't it? Yeah, you have to come back, isn't it? Yeah. This is the craving. This is what brings us to the next life. Imagine when we die, cannot see. After that, cannot hear. After that, cannot breathe. Then what does the mind do? Mind says, hey, this is bad. <laughs> I don't want this. Yeah. I want to be. How can I be? Be. Yeah. And then next life. Those human beings, when they die, they don't say there is no thought of I want to be. They have no birth. Because it is this thought, 
I want to be that link us to the next life. We will be like that because we are not like this type of human beings who are called Arahants. When the Arahants die, die, finish. When we die, yeah, everything shut off, eh, not enough, I want to be. That gives us another birth. You can understand or not. This unhappy feeling that cannot see, cannot hear, cannot touch, cannot... I don't like it. Give me a chance to see, hear, touch, feel, all that. Uh, give me a chance, a little chance. Boom, next birth. Yes. This is what happens. So if we work, if we work hard, <laughs> we can stop the tanha. I want to see, hear, the smell, the taste, touch, feel, all that, and think. Yeah. Then we won't have another birth. So the Buddhas, the Arahans, they, they die very, very happily <laughs> because there's nothing to compel them, to push them to have another birth. This one thing, tanha, tanha, craving, is the important link to the next birth. That's why we go on. And we have gone on for... The Buddha said, uncountable. <laughs> the, the uncountable lives we had, the uncountable parents we have said goodbye to, the uncountable tears, the Buddha said, will feel that we have cried over these uncountable lives and existence, will feel the four ocean. Tears, saying goodbye. Yeah. This is why the Buddha said, we must try and stop it. So, Tanha is our creator, not something, somebody up there. We create ourselves due to this quality in our mind called Tanha, thirst want, must have, give us some more things. But if we don't have, it's okay. Yeah. But there is a long journey towards getting rid of Tanha. Do you think human beings can get rid of Tanha? Very good. Very wise. <laughs> because you try this. Tomorrow, you go back to office and ask your colleagues, do you, can you get rid of your wanting and desire? And see, can you come back and do a survey? <laughs> How many people out there will say, you cannot? Almost all my friends, and I ask them, can you get rid of your desire? Live very simply. They said, we can live simply, we can control the desire, but we cannot get rid of it. So to them, in their understanding, in their intelligence yeah, of the world, people cannot get rid of desire. And right now, my dear brothers and sisters, in the back of your mind also, you will also think, how can somebody get rid of all the desire? How? Can I? Sure not. <laughs> We're also not sure how some human being can cut away the desire so that at the moment of death, yeah, cannot see, cannot hear, cannot touch, he or she will not say, give me a chance, little chance. <laughs> I want to see, hear, touch, smell. Yeah, I want to know things. I want to have things. Many people say cannot. We will go on. We will go on. That's why the Buddha's teachings are unique. You do not have, you cannot find another teaching that says we can cut away our tanha. Nobody else. This is a unique system. So, 
Understanding tanha and dukkha allows us a clearer journey through life. When I made form this sentence, I said, can understanding tanha and dukkha allow us a happier journey through life? Then cut, I put clearer. <laughs> because sometimes when we understand desire, it's hard to be happy immediately. It's hard. Even now, after this talk, you will be thinking, can I really be happy after understanding tanha? But I will give you some alternative. Don't worry. Yeah, there, there is some, some medicine. So it's good to be clear. Because when we are clear, we know what to do. It doesn't mean when we are clear, we become easier and comfortable and happier and see folks eye, you know. <laughs> It doesn't mean that. It means that we know what to do. Because why? Clear, ma. we get rid of all this haze in our eyes, in our mind. Yeah? And then we will try to start the journey with the practice, with the study and the practice. So, technicalities. There are three types of craving. The first type of craving is we know very well. Craving for is called karma. Yeah, karma is sensual. Craving for sensual pleasure. That means we want to enjoy. Yeah, and Chinese people want to enjoy more eating. <laughs> Taste. Yeah, sure. Right? I used to have a group of friends, you know, when I was younger. Enjoy eating. They would say, come, we go 30 kilometers, there's this beggar chicken, you know, very, very good. Okay, okay, we go, we go. Uh, Saturday or Friday or Sunday, we go. So we go and eat the, this, don't know, whatever dish, and it was really good, very good, but quite far. Yeah. And then on the way back, uh, before we even arrive home, we start to discuss, uh, next week what to eat? Uh? <laughs> It is the desire, you know, these desires must constantly be replaced. Not one is enough. Huh? This year, okay, family, we go for holiday tour to China. Then on the plane coming back, next year we go to Japan. <laughs> <laughs> then after a while, oh, next year we go to uh, Czech Republic. <laughs> yeah, then, then next year, then we have to constantly replace or else not happy. Not happy. One, not enough. We must replace. Yeah. This is the nature of sensual pleasure. Yeah. We like to hear things. Please, you know, play the music that I like. Please say to me, talk to me, words that I like to hear. Those words that I don't like to hear, please don't say. <laughs> right? Now, this is the nature of sensual pleasure. You know, you want to lie down on a nice bed. Yeah? You want to have access to internet. <laughs> you want to uh, smell things there that are nice. And you want to avoid the... The, the unpleasant smells, right? So pleasurable sensations, we understand this. So there is the tanha, the thirst. Yeah? Eat also must eat interesting things, delicious things, nice things. I cannot just eat rice and uh, dal, you know, not enough. I got to have a little bit more, <laughs> yeah, something interesting. So this is the uh, sensual pleasure that drives our life. So today, my dear brothers and sisters, yeah, we talk about it this morning. In this morning, we talk about it. So it becomes clearer. Yeah. But in our life, when it is not clear, 
this is the only thing that drives us to enjoy and enjoy and enjoy. What else is there but enjoy lah? Yeah, enjoy seeing, enjoy smelling, enjoy taste, enjoy. This is what life is all about. Yeah, this is the way many, many people, this is the way I also used to see things. We are born, you must enjoy. Or else, why waste your life? How to enjoy? Work hard, nah. get money, enjoy. And when we enjoy, 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 we say, my life is happy. Because I enjoy, 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 connected nah, equals happiness. <laughs> So don't tell me about the things that cannot enjoy. Like sickness and problems and stress. Uh, that one I don't want to hear. <laughs> I only want to hear the things that make me happy. That is called enjoyment of the sensual pleasure. And yeah, it must be replaced. It must be replaced. Because after eating this, we eat that. After eating that, we eat something else. Because... The same thing is boring, isn't it? Every day eat wonton mee, ah, boring. <laughs> yeah. Tomorrow I must eat something else. You know, I must go and eat uh, something equally delicious, but not the same as wonton mee. Second thing I have to remember, yeah, there is a limit. You eat too much wonton mee, you cannot take it. You eat too much durian, you can die. Yeah, there's one man in the papers, did you read or not? Because the price of Musang King came down, he ate every day until he died, you know. Yeah, I think over uh, consumption of the protein, uh, he, he died. Too much protein. You listen to the same person telling you, you are handsome, you are beautiful. For two weeks, uh, 14 days, it becomes suffering. <laughs> mm. you, you tell your wife, your husband, your partner, always tell me uh, that you love me. You cannot be without me. Every hour of the day, three days, I think, cukup. <laughs> After that, cannot. Okay, please stop, stop, stop. <laughs> because our senses, the calibration, this machine can only take so much pleasure. After that, become pain. We can't take too much. We can take it and we like it, then we rest, then plan for the other one then take it again. But if we eat the same thing for breakfast, lunch and dinner, uh, I don't want to take it for next two years. Don't give me any more Musang King. <laughs> Why? Because you can't take it. The, 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 um, the body, the senses cannot take too much. There's a limit, there's a peak and after that, it is suffering. These two things you have to remember. Yeah? And we know it, but we don't, we are not clear about it. Is this something new to you? Number one, must replace. Number two, you can't take too much. You know it, but not clear. Now I make it clear. This is the nature of sense pleasure. Number two, there's another kind of tanha, thirst. Number one, you want to exist. You just experience it just now. When you close your eyes, ears, all that. I want a chance to live. Yeah. This is the second one. It is very strong. When you close your eyes, close your ears, mm, you really feel if we go on for some time, yeah, even half a minute, you will feel very uncomfortable. Even fear will come. Panic. Then you get very, very, very uh, worried. Am I going to die? <laughs> the question. 
after the am I going to die? When you die, yeah, give me a chance to live. Next one. This is the craving, the thirst for existence. Yeah, this is very, very strong. But we are in a place, in a country that is very, very comfortable. This thing doesn't appear in our mind. But I told you before, I had a student yeah, from Middle East. The country was at war. The bomb fell on her neighborhood. The, the war come nearer and nearer. And the bomb started bomb, bomb, bomb in her neighborhood. All she could do is crawl under the bed and say, let me live through this night until morning. There's nothing she can do. Just crawl under the bed. And luckily, yeah, she was able to escape and then she came to Malaysia and to, to study. So we never really experienced this. But there are many people in the world, when we look at the newspapers, look at the TV, look at the, the reporting, many people are running away from this sort of situation. Danger is a danger. Yeah. Have you ever felt in this type of danger before? Where you could lose your life? Hmm. So lucky. Sadhu, sadhu. <laughs> For your good karma. Good karma. Makes you live without any anxiety of life or death. So, I've been in an accident where I was driving. The car spin on the highway. So for two seconds, I was thinking, am I going to live or die? <laughs> if the car had smashed, I would be dead. Or at least I would have gone to hospital for a long time. Luckily, this car didn't, uh, didn't go across the divider. So if you have been, but everything, very interesting, everything slowed down. I can see, you know, then I can think, what is going to happen next? <laughs> Very interesting. So the desire to live yeah, is very, very strong. This is the desire for existence. There's another one which is quite strange. The Buddha explained it is, it is the desire for non-existence. Can you understand? the desire for non-existence, it is when your life is full of so much suffering, you don't want to live. Let me die better. Yeah. You are full of pain and suffering and it is not worth taking another breath because one more breath means more suffering. You just say, let me get out of here. I don't want to be here. I don't want to live. Here, yeah. So non-existence. Yeah, this is a very, very powerful and very deep suffering. Then only you, it produces this kind of thought. You think like this. So these are the three types of suffering, uh, craving. I mean, and I just wanted to show you the spectrum of craving. That means. Craving doesn't mean that it is the strong craving. There is the craving of excessive addictive desire. Where, you know, many years ago, the similar thing is, you get this Chinese TV serial <laughs> where people watch until their eyes swollen. Have you, you know or not? Yeah, 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 there are people. They keep on watching, it's so interesting. They watch, watch, watch. Day and night, they watch until the eye become swollen. Uh, this is an addiction. Excessive addiction. And it can be produced through wanting, possession, through power, through sex, through uh, wanting, shopping, yeah. <laughs> Shop till you drop. <laughs> you know this line. It is an excessive. I've seen people, they, it is excessive. 
Yeah, they go to some city, you know, uh, wherever, and they shop and they shop and they shop until they, they cannot even walk anymore. <laughs> yeah, but they are happy because they say, you know, this is uh, this makes me happy. And things like fame, entertainment, yeah, like I said, entertainment now is no longer uh, Hong Kong series; it is Korean series. <laughs> And you keep on going, 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 right? Uh, China series or so. I was introduced to it by my wife. <laughs> Actually, I never watched, you know. She said, this one very interesting. You watch, huh? Then I watch, hey, not bad, no? <laughs> so now I got new one, you know, new Tanha in my life. <sighs> uh, as well as drugs. Yeah, drugs, no need to say. But our regular habitual tendencies, in our ordinary life, such as thinking. Yeah, there is a desire to think, I must think, you know. I see this, I must think. I must think about this person, that person. Hey, don't think, after it makes you very unhappy. No, I must think. <laughs> so you keep on thinking, 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 thinking about what is happening around you, about the people around you, the situations around you. As well as communicating, you want to talk to people. You know? You have to talk. Don't talk, cannot. <laughs> you found out something. Wow, this is juicy secret. Huh? I must tell my friend. I found out about this. Wow, this terrible thing. Yeah. And then if you don't talk, you will burst. So immediately call. Now I've got a handphone. Huh? Talk, 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 talk. You know huh, about this person. I just found out. <laughs> and then you have this desire to talk. And then there's a desire, of course, eating, drinking, you know, yeah, sometimes when we, sometimes, you know, when we are doing like meditation, yeah, we do meditation, then as we meditate, cup of tea, <laughs> cup of coffee, mm -hmm. no, no, meditate, no, <laughs> coffee, you know, <laughs> I cannot get up, I'll go and make coffee, drink, and then sit down, meditate again. This is Tanha, yeah. Reading, uh, knowing something, uh, cooking also, rushing and working. All those things are very small things. This is the other side. The small, small, but very regular. The other one is addiction, very excessive. We, if we don't have, become very unhappy. So this is the whole spectrum from the very small to the very, very big. Yeah, types of craving. This big craving, sometimes we will kill people. We will destroy people because we want to satisfy this craving. Yeah, possession, especially. When your neighbor changed car, you also must change car. Uh, he changed what type of car? <laughs> I also must change that type of car. Yeah, this is craving. So you see the thirst. You are thirsty, you know. Whenever we think we must have, it is a thirst. And for us, 99.999% of people in the world, there is no other way. What else is there in life but enjoy, no? right? But the enjoyment gives us a lot of problems. <laughs> Because the more we want something, the more we have to work for it. And after that, stress. Yeah. We become unhappy. We become darker yeah, in our mind. So it makes life difficult. And life is like this. Uh, maybe I don't tell this story first. I, I come back to it. Yeah, uh, I, I came across many articles. Understanding the cause of human suffering. And here it says from, uh, you know, LinkedIn. Uh, LinkedIn is very, very popular for working people. It says this article by this doctor uh, who is a kind of, a, uh, what is she? Uh? She's a kind of um, coach, uh, counsellor. She said, majority of people are never satisfied because their lives are controlled by greed, by wanting to have more. 
People generally cling to comfort, pleasure, and self-indulgent uh, indulgence, ignorant, ignorant of the fact that the desire manifested in greed for wealth or material gain yeah, is actually the cause of suffering. So because we suffer, we want more things so that this suffering can stop. But we go and get this thing, yeah, and then there's more suffering because we have to work harder, we have to get more money. Yeah. Okay, now I'm suffering. I want some more other things so that this suffering can stop. So you, you try and go on and it never ends. Yeah. Most people in the world think like this. Most people. Yeah. Except those here in Nalanda today. <laughs> and then, yeah, from National Geographic, yeah, uh, there is this thing about consumerism. Consumerism means we want to buy more things. Yeah. So I've seen this great rise in consumerism in Asia. Yeah, especially you go to China, you can see consumerism is fantastic. That means buying things. The consumer wants to consume more things. So yeah, in, the, in China now, yeah, they are pretty advanced. So they have the, usually the latest of mobile phones and all these things, they, they have it. So there is the drive to have more and more and more. But there was a survey about consumerism, buying things and happiness. Because we, we, would, we talk about the more you have, the happier you must be, isn't it? But it doesn't necessarily work out that way. Because in this National Geographic says, yeah, the increase in prosperity is not making humans happier or healthier, according to several studies. Findings from a survey of life satisfaction in more than 65 countries indicate that income and happiness tend to track well. That means when you are poor, you really are not happy. Yeah, that is a fact. Poor people are not happy. But you go higher and higher and higher and higher. There is one point when you have more, it doesn't mean you are more happy. There is a cutting off. There is a, an absolute uh, level where more things is not more happy. The study have found in 65 countries, yeah, where this income, etc., etc., that is in 1995. Uh, after that, additional, but even today, the surveys, the, the research say the same thing. Yeah, you can be, uh, you know, comfortable up to a point, and then after that, it doesn't make any difference. Yeah, you can drink really, really good coffee, but I give you better coffee. It doesn't make any difference because you can't tell, you know, whether it's better coffee or not. So increased consumerism comes at a steep price. The more we buy things, the more we save, uh, earn money to buy things, there's a price. People are incurring debt, debt and working longer hours to pay for the high consumption lifestyle. So you work harder to buy more things and not enough, buy some more because yeah, after a while, this new thing, you get bored with it. Yeah. So therefore, you must have the new model, work harder to get new. So it goes on and on and on. And there's this thing, I, I just put there, plastics. You know, the, the increase in plastics uh, is incredible. Yeah, it is... Uh, yeah, uh, you can't see it, but here it is. The, the, the rise in plastics is really, is part of the, this article. Yeah. Do you know they have discovered recently a cave, uh, a cave yeah, that has a small stream running through the cave that no human being ever gone to that cave before. It is totally uh, untouched by human beings. But when they check the water, it's, there is trace of microplastic. How did the microplastic get into the cave that no human being has gone inside before? So they're trying to find out. How did the plastic get inside there? It's becoming a big problem. Yeah. Now, there are two further categories of 
what we call craving. Yeah. One is called tanha, which is unwholesome. It makes us more and more greedy. There's another one. It is a motivation to do things, to achieve things. It's called chanda, which is wholesome. And according to our teacher, Achanjaya Saro, let me read it to you. Yeah. The Buddha spoke of two kinds of desire, that is, desire that arises from ignorance and delusion, which is called tanha, and desire that arises from wisdom and intelligence, which is called kusala chanda. There's another aspect to it. So it doesn't mean desire, desire, desire is all bad. Yeah. You have the desire to come here. That is actually not called tanha. That is called chanda. But it is more specific. It is a wholesome chanda. It is called kusala chanda. Kusala means wholesome, yeah? uh, beneficial, profitable, good for you type of chanda. And um, Tan Achan said, Chanda has a range of meaning, but in the, it doesn't mean that all Chanda is good Chanda, yeah, spiritual Chanda. But in this case, I'm going to use it to mean wise and intelligent desire and motivation. In the presence of Chanda, effort of virya increases. You have strength, right? You think. Sunday morning, Nalanda, oh, energy come. <laughs> and you will drive, you will walk, you will take LRT just to come here because there is Kusala Chanda. Yeah? You are happy to do it. You feel satisfied. Then, effort is in many ways the characteristic Dhamma of the, of the teachings of the Buddha. In the Buddha's teaching, effort is very, very important. Because you can read something, listen something, after that, sit back, do nothing. There is no effort, there is no energy, no virya. So nothing is achieved. This teaching by the Buddha is a teaching of go and do it. Yeah, Nike said, just do it. <laughs> It is a teaching of do it. You must do it. If you go home and then forget about it, nothing happens. Nothing benefits you. Nothing is good for you. But if you every day practice, 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 practice good things, helping others, yeah, calming your mind, it is good. Yeah, it is an effort. It is right effort. It is effort to benefit yourself. So, uh, Achan Jayasaro further said, In fact, the Buddha referred to his teaching not as Theravada, but Viryavada. Virya is energy, energy, energy. The same energy that took this monk, Swensang, through desert jungle and bandits and killers from China to India to get the teachings. What kind of virya is that? He could have been killed. <laughs> and the government didn't want him to leave the, the country. So he had to sneak out <laughs> of the country. And when he came back, the king wanted to chop his head. But he came back anyway. <laughs> and the king forgave him. Yeah. So you can see why the Buddha said, my teaching is a virya vada. Energy, action, you know, strength. A teaching of effort. A teaching that there is such a thing as effort and that effort is what is needed for progress on this Noble Eightfold Path. You need the effort. You need to put in, you know, the energy. Okay, next. Right now, to connect this very, very quickly. Yeah, I will go through this. The scientific way, because how now, yeah, I want you to, um, I hope, to see things clearly, you have this scientific approach. 
Yeah, because we learn science in school, isn't it? And science and technology is very important in today's world. Number one, how do we understand the world? Number one, yeah, first-hand experience of the world. Experience the world. Go and see, uh, see smell, hear, taste. Go and experience the world. Objectively. Yeah, don't just enjoy, 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 and then forget about uh, experiencing and understanding. You must enjoy, but you also are objective. Then, if you want to find out more, you experiment and then you verify. Secondly, you come back to your school or your uh, house yeah, or your university and then you reason. I experienced this, therefore it is like this. Yeah, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Therefore, you debate with other people. You know, you you saw this, and I saw this. I, is it right? So you talk about it. Yeah, you debate, and then you make conclusions. Then after that, you write and print the book and disseminate the knowledge. This is science, isn't it? Yeah, this is what we have learned. We make the experiment. We know that water boils at 100 degrees uh, centigrade. Yeah. It is a fact that everywhere you achieve 100 degrees centigrade, water will boil. It is a scientific fact. Then we discuss it. Hey, your water boil or not? My water boil at 100 degrees. Oh, all our water boiled at 100. Okay, let us write, <laughs> write a book about how to boil water. Achieve, you must have fire, a flame or uh, electricity or something. You achieve 100 degrees centigrade, your water will boil. Print it and give out the books. So the Buddha's teachings is like this. There is direct personal experience. You are here, although you are listening, I am encouraging you to have direct personal experience. Use your senses to see whether what I am saying yeah, is acceptable to you or not. And at the, day, at the end of the day, what is your experience? Because if you are clear, you will come to the conclusion that Experience is suffering. Driven by tanha, you will have suffering. Okay, wait a while, it's not so sad. <laughs> I will give you a payoff, yeah, a reward. So this is what the Buddha did. He went to see what is happening in the body and in the mind through his own experience. Then after that, he came out of that enlightenment experience and then he thought about it for eight weeks around the Bodhi tree. What did I just experience? What was it that, that I saw in my meditation? For eight weeks, he was thinking about it. Then at the end of the eight weeks, he walked to where the five ascetics were and he delivered to them what he had understood had saw yeah, in his enlightenment. He saw a lot of things in the enlightenment. When he pop got the enlightenment yeah, on the Uesak Eve, so many things were open to him. But he couldn't make sense of everything, so he had to put it in the right order. He used these eight weeks to put it in the right uh, format. And then print books, Go and teach others or teach others, print books. So isn't the Buddha's method scientific? You see first, experience first. Do you agree or not? We experience this. Then we talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. Like here, we are now discussing it. Then after that, uh, we, have, uh, we print books. Now, there are some other systems where it is the other way around. They give you the book. First of all, they give you book. Here's the book. Book come from up there. Two, yeah, you talk about it, you learn from the book. And then number three, your experience must be according to the book. If you have anything different, 
keep quiet. <laughs> For hundreds of years, this was the system. And then after that, we got what is called science. <laughs> and science rejected this system. This system is a system of belief, not wisdom. So the Buddha system is, go and see, go and understand, true or not, clear or not, is very important. So let me now take you through another way of, ooh, okay, right. Another way of looking at Happiness. The Buddha said in this sutta called Niramisa Sutta, there are two ways of walking in the world. You walk with Tanha or you walk with Chanda or specifically Kusala Chanda. One will give you sense enjoyment and that is worldly that's why i said 99.99999999 percent of the world will say enjoy enjoyment equal happiness yeah you can eat good food especially chinese yeah happy law <laughs> life is good isn't it to others they must have possession nice house, nice car, all that. Life is good. That's all they know. They don't know anything else. There is no alternative. The Buddha said, there is another kind of happiness that is brought about by Chanda. It is called unworldly happiness. And it is brought about by letting go. So my dear brothers and sisters, this morning you let go having good breakfast. You let go. You let go your time of two hours, three hours by coming here to learn. I hope you feel lighter. This happiness, you can develop further. You can go and help others and you will get a happiness. This is not a happiness of enjoyment, but you are still happy. How come? <laughs> Isn't it that you enjoy, 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 only can be happy? No. I have another way of being happy. I help others. I do good for other people. Then I feel there's a very warm feeling inside here after I help others. After I go to the old folks' home, I go to the sick children, the retarded, the, the, the OKU people, I feel good. And I will do it some more. Again and again, I will do it. Because it brings me happiness. So there are two types of happiness. And I'm sure you know them. But today, I want to make it, make it what? <laughs> Clear to you. It doesn't mean that worldly happiness is the only happiness. Once I went for meditation retreat, very short one, few days, five days. And then on the fourth day, I was thinking, tomorrow I'm going home. Because meditation retreat, the environment is very simple. Bed is simple, food is simple, uh, the, the surroundings are very simple. You just meditate. So I was thinking, tomorrow I go home. I go back to my house, to my nice bed. Yeah to my TV, my internet, good food, you know, nice surroundings. But my teachers are still here. Oh, I very, very um, uh, pity them, you know. <laughs> so, so. This is my thinking. Poor thing, you know, they have to stay here. That night, the monk gave a talk. <laughs> he said, those of you, yeah, who have no wisdom, you are always running after happiness. You must chase the happiness. You work hard to chase the happiness. You work hard to get 
enjoyment. Those of us who have let go, we don't need to look for happiness. Why? Because happiness is here, in the heart, in the mind. Then only I realized how stupid I was. <laughs> right? So now I try to do more and more <laughs> meditation. Right? I was away for three weeks in the meditation. Yeah. It, was, it was a difficult time, not easy, because every waking moment you have to meditate. You wake up means meditate. Then you eat, also meditate. Go to the toilet, also meditate. Yeah, bathe, also meditate. But I found it is the most satisfying time of my life. Very quiet. And what we are trying to develop is clearness. Not blurness, clearness. So therefore, I encourage you, <laughs> brothers and sisters, to spend more time, clear the mind. Not just blur, blur, blur. Because what we will get is Niramisa Sukha, unworldly happiness. That's why all these monks, you know, go and stay in the jungle. How do they get their food? They take the bowl, walk for four hours, people put, and then they come back. One meal a day, that's all they eat. Why do they do it? Because there is happiness. There is a clearness, clarity about their happiness. They know where they are going. But the people in the world, we enjoy this, but we don't know where we are going. Very blurly, we just go round and round <laughs> in the blurness. So therefore, we have to develop. We are more and more. Tanha pulls us out of our peaceful existence. So now I hope for at least a few minutes or half an hour, you are peaceful, happy then start to think, lunch. <laughs> you are pulled out, you are pulled out of this peace. Here peace, oh nice. Yeah, I hope you are getting what I'm saying. If you can't get it, then maybe not so peaceful. But if you are understanding it, you might experience some peace. Then after that, Tanha, I got to go home. The kids are waiting. <laughs> My husband is waiting, my wife is waiting, uh, attached. Right. So that is not to say it's not happy, but it is another type of happiness. So now on your menu, you can choose <laughs> two types of happiness, which is better than those others, only one thing on the menu, which is worldly happiness. Yeah. Um, okay, very quickly, I don't know whether we've got time for discussion. Right? To practice right livelihood, this is important. We are lay people, we are not monks or nuns, so we have to earn a living. Venerable Thich Nhat Hanh, who passed away recently, said, in, to practice right livelihood, you have to find a way to earn your living without transgressing or breaking your ideals of love and compassion. The way you support yourself can be an expression of your deepest self or it can be a source of suffering for you and others. So therefore, as you earn your living, make sure the way that you work is not disturbing others or yourself. It's not breaking your precepts or not disturbing your peace in your mind. That's why I include this. It is relevant to us because you know, I'm retired. But if you are working, you have to think about this. Yeah. How far you want to go before you think this is not right and then you can come back. You have to come back. So, okay, what do we need? Yeah, and what do we want? 
is it need and wants the same? So we have to follow the middle path. Yeah, I just added this. These are the rich and famous people who ended their lives earlier. Yeah, and died young. How many do you recognize? Yeah, they killed themselves basically. They were rich, they were well known, they were popular, they had everything, and yet they decided to end their life. So this is the basic. Yeah. Um, managing there's a lot more to it, but I we don't have much time. Number one, how do you manage it? Number one, understand it. So today I give you the concept, you know, the theory. It is academic, so you have to put it into practice. Number two, recognize it. I hope you can recognize two types of um, motivation, tanha and chanda. These are motivations. It makes you want to do things yeah, in the world. So then the result is two types of happiness. Yeah? One is worldly happiness. The other is unworldly out of this world, doesn't belong to the world, but it is still there. Yeah? Nira, Misa, Sukha. Yeah. The, the, the worldly one is Amisa. Amisa means tangible, can hold. You can do Dana, Amisa, Dana. What is Amisa, Dana? Give money, give clothes, give medicine, give food. That means can touch and tangible, Amisa. This is Nira, Amisa not amisa it is cannot hold cannot touch but it is there yeah you know it be mindful of its rising when it comes yeah you are mindful oh now i am getting greedy for the next new mobile phone i just saw the advertisement shall i get it uh, yeah, recognize it what is the cause okay now important the cause of our tanha is ignorance we think everything will stay there we think everything will yeah cannot disappear we think things cannot change yeah. we think everything that we invest in will always be safe but it is not safe yeah our youth black hair now gray hair is not safe <laughs> it changes and it disappears it will go away so knowing that, we don't have to be so crazy about all these things. We can have it. The middle path means we can have it. But it doesn't mean that we must have the best or we must be better than others or we must compare to other people. Yeah. Just as long as you can have something to eat and it is good, it is clean, it is nutritious, that's enough. Yeah. You don't have to go to the high-class restaurant. <laughs> you don't have to. Yeah. Then you reflect and discuss. I hope you can do that. You aspire to let it go, and then you actually let it go. So you give, yeah, give uh, donate things, give your time, give your money, give your effort yeah, to, um, uh, to let go of the thirst. Yeah, not so thirsty. Ah, sister, do we have time? I have talked too long. Do we have time for discussion? If not, then we will just Q&A. Q&A, yeah? Oh, the story, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes, it, it, it's very relevant. It's the story, it's a Zen story. Yeah. It actually, it's good that you remind me at the end. So there was this monk, he was walking on the hillside. Suddenly, tiger appeared. So he ran. He don't want the tiger to eat him. Uh. So he ran. And as he ran, he saw that there is a cliff. If he jump, he sure die. But at the side of the cliff, there is a, a, a vine. There is a, some kind of plant. So he grabbed hold of the plant and then he uh, go backwards. So he, the tiger is there looking at him, but he is holding on to the, the plant the vine yeah so uh, he is escaped from the tiger and the tiger came to the edge and snarled at him Rawr! yeah <laughs> and while he was in this dangerous situation 
the the female tiger the on top there is a male tiger female tiger went to the bottom and waited for him so two tigers are waiting for him so yeah trembling he held on to the vine that was keeping him from being, being dinner for the two tigers but then two mice came and started to uh, bite his vine his his um, uh, the plant the plant bite, bite 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 and he saw that once they finish biting habis <laughs> he's going to fall and at least one tiger is going to eat him but as he was yeah worried and uh, don't know what to do he saw next to the vine a ripe strawberry and he said oh strawberry and he took the strawberry and he ate it yeah and he said wow that's a good strawberry you know <laughs> so does it make sense to you we are like that yeah we are in a dangerous situation according to this zen story we are in this situation but all we know is the vine is going to break <laughs> But while the vine is being bitten by the mice, we enjoy this, enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Because we don't know what else to do. What else can you do? We don't know what else to do. So, end of story. <laughs> I, I, I don't have the end. Yeah, but the, it comes from uh, the, the, the Zen tradition. Yeah. To make us think about our situation as well.